Hey, 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 good morning, Central. Let's come in. Let's find a seat. Before we start worship today, I've got a couple of announcements for you. First one is that the library is conducting a survey over the next couple of weeks. And this is for you to express your constructive feedback about the library, its resources, and its services. So please check your email for a link to that survey. Um, Dominic Austin is looking to forming a ceramics and pottery group on campus. So if you're interested in participating in that, go talk to Dom. This Thursday is the Solid Men's Conference from 4 to 8, and there's workshops, snacks, dinners, and worship. Ladies, if you're available, they need about 15 volunteers to help serve dinner. So if you want to um, participate in that, go talk to Kevin Brown. Um, guys, that is where you're going for Thrive on Thursday. So you'll get a free dinner. Oh, yeah, free dinner. <laughs> and you get to stick around for the main session after that. Tonight, we have Sperling Open Dorms from 7 to 9. So come hang out in the girls' dorm. Man on the floor. <laughs> Um, tomorrow, um, Student Activities is hosting an all-campus Easter egg hunt. I heard that there's going to be like 500 eggs to find. It's going to be on the front lawn, so if you want to help stuff eggs or help hide them, go talk to Stephanie Hansel. And if you want to participate, just show up on the front lawn at 1145. So starting April 1st, fall registration for the next semester, fall 24, will open uh, Moberly Campus students, make sure to check your email to schedule an appointment to meet with the registrar. And lastly, this is just a reminder that um, the cafeteria will be closed on Friday and Saturday of this week due to Good Friday. But the Harvest House will be open 12 to 8 Friday and Saturday, but will be closed on Sunday for Easter. Both places will open for regular hours on Monday, April 1st. So as we transition into worship, let's stand and let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you so grateful and thankful that uh, we get to gather and worship you today. I pray that you will be with us as we learn about these mission trips. May you open our hearts and our minds to, uh, to your transformation and what you have to say to us today. Lord, we love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right. This, next, this first song that we're going to sing, uh, I hope you guys remember. It wasn't too long ago that we sang this. Um, so I'm going to ask if there's anybody that is willing to come up on stage to help with the actions. <laughs> All right, I'm hearing Nolan Mathis and Jackson. <laughs> and just as an introduction, I... I do think that there's a lot that we should be grateful for. Um, for us that went on the trips, uh, it, it was a really good experience. And I've talked with a couple of the people that went on the different trips. And I've heard really great things and some sad things, some frustrating things within the boundaries of what went on or what's going on, what the situation is with the people there. But nonetheless, I think uh, we're, we're, we are to be grateful for what we have here and the privilege that we have of being here at school and being able to be free here and profess God's word. And so that's one more thing to be thankful for. Speaking of thankfulness, let's sing Tonto. Yo tengo tanto, 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 tanto. Tanto, 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 tanto para agradecer. Yo tengo tanto, 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 tanto para agradecer. Tengo un amigo para agradecer. Tengo un amigo para agradecer. Tengo un amigo. Para agradecer, tengo un amigo para agradecer. Yo tengo, yo tengo tanto, 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 tanto para agradecer. Yo tengo tanto, 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 tanto. 
tanto, 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 tanto para agradecer Tengo a mis papás 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 para agradecer Yo tengo tanto Tanto, tanto, tanto para agradecer Yo tengo tanto, 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 tanto para agradecer Tengo a Jesús 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 para agradecer yo tengo tanto 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 para agradecer yo tengo tanto 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 para agradecer más rápido yo tengo tanto 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 para agradecer más rápido yo tengo tanto 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 para agradecer thank you guys and all right looks like we got uh Our own little John in the house for Tonto. Okay. <laughs> Here is where I lay it down. Every burden, every crown This is my surrender This is my surrender Here is where I lay it down Every lie and every doubt This is my surrender And I will make room for you
every season of my life Cause you are the well that won't burn dry Cause you are the well that won't run dry Cause you are the well that won't run dry Thank you, God, for today and for giving us the opportunity to gather here, uh, that uh, we were able to come back uh, from our break that we had from school, uh, whether it was a mission trip or whether it was going back home or whatever it was that we were doing throughout this week. I just pray that uh, we were able to recover and that we were able to rest enough to be able to come back and have energy and have our mentality set on serving you once again. I pray that this chapel can serve as a reminder of what we're back here to do and what we're, uh, what our purpose is in your story, which is to serve you and to honor you and to be able to spread your love and your message to others through our actions. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you all for coming. Am I on? There we are. So last fall... Um, maybe some of you were here, some, maybe some of you don't remember, but three people, um, they had an idea. They had an idea that maybe, perhaps, God could be calling them to lead a trip on Outreach Week. And so, giving up all hopes of going to the beach and enjoying themselves fully, they, um, they embarked on a new adventure. And they not only chose to go themselves, but they also recruited some people to come with them. And so today we have the privilege to hear what happened during Outreach 2024. And we're going to start out with Team Arizona. Um, as they make their way out here, Team Arizona was led by Sean Sisko. And um, they also got to brave some fun things that they're going to tell you all about. But um, let's listen to Team Arizona. Kind of give us a report. And that brings me into tears, just remembering those moments with those kids, personally. And what Tori and Kara do at 318 Ministries is so great. They help the children of the Apache, St. Carlos Apache tribe. And they've been on the field for, for 20 years. I actually celebrated the 20th year anniversary when we were there. And they've actually, and when it comes to Native American uh, missionaries, they're the ones who've been on the field the longest. So praise to God for how much work he's done through them for those 20 years. But I want to talk about my favorite moment of the mission trip, which was hanging out with those kids and 
just seeing that video again brings me to tears a little bit because I miss those children so much and how much impact we've actually made in their lives during that. And I might call that a little bit more of my God moment in for that because they, one thing about the reservation is a lot of the people there are live in poverty and they barely have stuff, yet these children are so joyful and so happy that they don't even show what's going on in their lives, that God is saying, you're loved. Even when your situations don't look like it, you're loved. Um, I just want to say this was my first mission trip, and it was really, really great and quite the experience. And I'm really, really thankful that I was able to go on it. And I just want to share my favorite thing about the trip. And as again, my favorite thing was also the kids just being able to hang, just show them God's love and just seeing them really happy, even though with the situations and circumstances that they might have on going on at home, which is really, really great. Um, and I, I, I saw God working in, in through us to show those kids love and just being able to be there. So I also really enjoyed uh, spending time with the kids. Um, and I also really enjoyed the conversations that we got to have with the missionaries. That was probably some of my favorite moments other than spending time with the kids, of course. Um, as far as how it's changed me, I've learned a lot about the history of the people and about the culture, and it's very sad and heartbreaking. And I wanted to share a couple statistics that we learned while we were there on the mission trip. The rate of child abuse among Native Americans is twice as high as the national average. Gang activity is more prevalent among Native Americans than it is among Latinos and African Americans. Suicide is the leading cause of death for Native Americans, males aged 10 to 14. The lifespan of a male Apache is in their 30s, and this is due to gangs, drugs, sexual abuse, suicide, and alcohol. So the Native American, other, something else I've also learned is that the Native American culture is very much a matriarchal society, and they're the ones that are the leading the families. And the men, step in when they, the kids are of age to be hunting and be warriors, but when they were forced onto reservations, that ended. So they don't have a lot of place in the family anymore because that was taken from them. And we had three boys that were spending time with us on the work project, and they have had a very rough life and none of them have had a father in their life, father influence except for the missionary. And being able to witness how God is working through the missionaries for those kids in those really bad situations and reminding them that even though they've done bad things, they're so loved. It's been really, really, really rewarding. Yeah, um, I just look at the video and just brings me to tears about children and um, just how much that goes on behind doors like you never know and, and just we just persevere even though we get tired throughout the day about you know doing our work projects and then go serve the kids it was still my favorite moment and just to spend time with them and just see their pure lives and their just their joy and just knowing that God is still for them so, yeah. I think for everyone on the team, it tore us down as we would drive through the reservation and we'd see people not caring about their homes, as in with, uh, with overgrowth of, of vegetation and all that. And also there's trash everywhere because they have no incentive to care for the land that they've been forced on. They have no incentive to care for the home that they do not own. But the best part for me was uh, actually doing the, the painting and the, the hammering and whatnot with um, three, three fellas that we were with. They were 18 to about 21 or so, but they were all very troubled. Two of them very still into to gang activity. The Bloods and the Crips are very uh, active on the reservation. And uh, one of them 
um, was, uh, was in jail till the end of the year last year for shooting somebody. The other one at the end of the year got out of the hospital for getting shot by somebody with gang activity. And then there was the, the, the third boy got stabbed. The, the week that we were going down there, the, the week we left on the Saturday, like that Monday night or Tuesday night, he, he was stabbed. Um, but the, the whole basis around 318 Ministries is not like John 318, it's 1 John 318. Dear children, let's not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. And then I like the KJV just trading actions for deeds. It, it, it's, while it is beneficial, it may, may not be the most beneficial in their situation to just stand out on the reservation and preach the love of Jesus. The most beneficial thing that we saw is instead of just the little Bible lesson we gave to the kids was showing indeed in an action when we were running around or, or just painting that we were painting a children's home, uh, like a foster home. In the deed of doing that, showing them that they are loved instead of just saying that they are loved was the most benefic- beneficial message for them. Showing that while they might not have love in their very home life, one, there are five white people in Missouri right now that love them a lot. Or, well, four white people in Missouri that love them a lot. <clears throat> but there's also uh, an infinite God that cares about them individually. Thank you, Team Arizona, for showing us that sometimes you don't have to go very far to work cross-culturally and to love cross-culturally. Team Ireland is going to make their way up here, and Team Ireland has a fun story because their leader set out planning to go someplace else, and then God had other plans. And that happens sometimes in ministry where you think you're going to serve a certain people or a certain kind of circumstance, and then God kind of shows up and does something different. And so I'm looking forward to hearing what they have to say. Hi. How are you feeling? Um, I feel strange. Like I woke up in another world, but it looks like home, but it doesn't.
So the video definitely does not do it justice because that was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. That uh, This was actually my first mission trip and I could talk for hours about the prayers that God answered and the things that we learned in all of the amazing ways that God moved. Um, but when we think of missions, we don't usually think of Europe as a place in such desperate need of the gospel. We tend to overlook Europe. But the truth is that Europe is the least evangelized continent in the world. And in Ireland specifically, there's only around 1% or less in, uh, of the population that are Christian. And so one thing that we realized while we were over there is the poverty of the gospel and the absolute need to know Jesus apart from the Catholic Church, apart from all of these misconceptions that they can have about Jesus from a lot of church hurt, a lot of lots of different things that play into it, but there's definitely the poverty of the gospel. And so we learned through that is the a different way of approaching evangelism, which kind of uh, Funston talked about this, but it was first building relationships and showing them love, not just telling them you're loved, not just telling them Jesus loves you, but showing it and just showing up, building those relationships first, meeting them where they are without any judgment or assumptions and just loving people and building a relationship with them was honestly one of the most rewarding parts of our trip and I had a pretty hard time thinking of a verse to summarize our entire trip because there's just so many that I could use and I love that Funston used the verse that he did because that's also the verse that I chose and so yeah first John 3 16 through 18 we know love by this that Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? Little children, let us not love with word or deed, word, oh my goodness, with word or tongue, but in deed and truth. What's up? Uh, I'm, I'm the guy who was pretty confused when we got there. Uh, it, it, was, it was awesome. Uh, Ireland mission trip was so cool. We met so many people. But um, one of the coolest things was a lot of the people I met was actually on the trip going to Ireland. I met, I met a woman who was Catholic or maybe ex-Catholic, I don't know, uh, a guy who was ex-Russian Orthodox. I met a lot of cool people, but the coolest experience I had was with a woman uh, named Jamie. Uh, we were sitting there. It was my first plane flight, not ride. Um, first plane flight, first time being on a mission trip, and uh, I was reading my Bible, and I look over, and she was writing some scripture down. And uh, so it kind of it sparked some conversation. And uh, uh, during the conversation, find out she leads a, uh, a mission trip with, uh, it's like Tip City Ministries, uh, in Ohio? No, yeah, okay, uh, in, in Ohio, uh, and it, it was super cool, and it was, it was such an encouragement time, because a lot of times when we go on mission trips, we kind of feel like we're, we're alone on this mission trip, we're kind of behind enemy lines, we're, we're the only people who, who have the gospel, who are spreading the gospel, but, but this was a testament of what, of what God was going to do on this mission trip, and just meeting Jamie and having that encouragement, she asked if she could pray for me uh, on the plane, just just right there, right when we landed in front of everyone, and then we got out, and uh, Meg asked if we could, the whole group could pray for her, and she asked if she could pray for the group. It, it, it was such uh, an encouragement for us, and it was, it was so awesome to see God's hand already in the mission trip, just on the first flight uh, to Charlotte, so... That, that, was, that was definitely my favorite part. Um, Ireland was insanely amazing. And there was this theme that happened with our devotionals. So people would give a devotional. We'd start off our morning together. And 
each devotional had something to do pertaining to that day. And so when I gave my devotional, it was on Tuesday, and it was about proclaiming the good news. And I had written it for an assignment literally the week before, and so I was like, you know what, we're on a mission trip. Yeah, we're going to proclaim the good news. This will be good. This will be good. And so I give the devotional to our team, and we have a good discussion, and it's all great. And then we go out, um, and we start doing our service projects, our work projects at uh, the Clarion Resource Center. And I remember we came back t- to the Tuttle's house, which was our missionary family. Um, we went back to their house to eat lunch. And the thing about Ireland um, that I discovered, you know, growing up in Haiti, the mission needs are very different, very different. The mission work there in Ireland and in Haiti is completely different because people in Ireland, they don't need your food, they don't need your water, they don't need your money. What they need, they have a spiritual need. And so we couldn't exactly approach and just be like, hey, yo, Jesus is awesome, you should hear about him. We can't just say that because the Catholic Church had already left a bad taste in their mouth about who God is. Um, it construed their thoughts and all that. And so we didn't know how to approach it. And the girls in our um, work projects, we got to fellowship with this girl named Geraldine, and the guys had this guy named Pat. And so we're at lunch, and Jess Tuttle says, you know what, you can start, you can start asking questions about religion. And we're like, oh, heck yeah, we're down. And so we get, after lunch, we get to working again, and Meg approaches the subject of Catholicism in schools with Geraldine. And so we get to talk in, and all of a sudden, <clears throat> we're sharing the gospel and um, sharing our beliefs, and she's telling us her beliefs, and she believes in a higher power, but, you know, she, don't, she doesn't know really who. And then what we didn't know was that the boys were also talking to Pat about his beliefs and found out that he was an atheist and um, didn't believe God was real or anything like that. And um, not knowing that, Meg asks if we can pray for Geraldine, ask Geraldine if we can pray for her. And she's like, oh, yeah, she's all for it. And so we get into the kitchen of the Clan Resource Center, and we're about to pray for her, and Meg calls the boys in. They're outside working on a project, and they come in, and Pat follows them. And we're kind of, we're getting into the circle, kind of embracing each other. And we're about to pray, and Meg asks, hey, Pat, can we pray for you too? And he's like, oh, no, no, no. I'm an atheist. I don't do that kind of thing. No, it's all good. And it's kind of this awkward moment where you're like, um, you're in the room. What do we, do we just like pray without you? Like, I, I don't know. It's kind of awkward for a second. And then we just, we start getting together. We're in this circle, and we got our hands on each other, and we're about to pray, and all of a sudden, Pat comes and joins our circle. And I remember looking at Aiden, and Aiden looks at Pat and is like, hey, you okay with this? You all right? He's like, yeah, yeah. And then he prayed with us, and we got to pray over Geraldine and Pat, an atheist and someone who just believes that there's a higher power. And, you know, you go on a mission trip to serve and bless, and then you end up being served, and you end up being blessed. And there was this quote that we, uh, I kept hearing throughout the entire trip, and it's proclaim the good news, and if needed, use words. And that's kind of like the sum of our trip. They knew we were different by the love that we showed, by the service that we did, by the joy that we showed. And that's what made them start asking questions. That's what made them want to know, who are these kids? What are they doing? What's their light? And so, yeah, I, I don't know who said that quote. I don't even know if I'm saying it word for word. Thank you, that one. So, yeah. But, yeah, that was my trip. So I got to actually do something I really enjoy that I do here. And so I got to crochet with old ladies for about, like, an hour. And, yeah, it was great. (laughs) It was probably, like, my dream come true to crochet with old ladies in a different country. It was fantastic. (laughs) And so I only got to talk with them for about an hour. And I wasn't able to, like, ask them, like, any, like, religious, like, questions because I didn't didn't have that relationship with them yet. But, like, I got to serve in probably the best way that I knew how. And the fact that God could use, like, my, like, talent to, like, bless them. Because, like, they were asking me questions about Missouri and, like, where I was from. And just, like, personal questions. They didn't even know who I was. And so I plan to, like, bless them even when I'm here. Um, But I think it showed how God can use, like, our talents 
that we already have maybe here to better like bless someone in a different country. And I think also it just shows how intentional God was the whole trip. Because I know a lot of people on my team use that word when they made different posts about it. And I just think how incredible it was to see like everything like come together for our, everyone on my mission trip. There's something so powerful about watching your fellow uh, brothers and sisters in Christ step out in faith. And so I just have to say that I'm super proud of the team that I was a part of. Uh, we are missing two people, Dom and Isaac Hill. Um, but everybody, just the way that everybody stepped out in out of their comfort zones and in faith was super encouraging. And as a leader, watching them was super powerful because we were not, we were all leaders. We were all a team of leaders. And so one thing that I can say that would describe this whole trip was prayer. Prayer was the priority. Before we left, um, every team meeting, you know, we, before we left, we gathered in a circle and prayed. Um, and God answered every single prayer, and one specifically to a T, where one day we went to the Cliffs of Moore, and we stopped for lunch. It was supposed to be pretty bad weather that day, but we stopped for lunch at a grocery store, and Nick is like, hey, let's pray for sunshine until 4 p.m. Well, 4 p.m. rolls around, and it starts downpouring on us, and we're, and mo some of us are trapped in, the, in not knowing where to go. We're lost, but a thing to, re a thing to remember is when we're out of our environment and our element, our eyes tend to be open more, and so that's where we see the answered prayers, but literally here in our environment, God is still answering prayers, and he's still working, and it's so easy to forget that because we're distracted by um, the homework assignments or the school or the relationships, but God is answering prayers right here, right now, and this is what we need to remember, that we don't need to go across the country. We don't need to go to another state or an environment. God's answering prayers right now. And I'm super, and I'm so thankful for um, how the trip had worked out because not, not a thing went wrong, and every, every prayer was answered. So uh, before I get started, I actually want to do something really quick, really quick. If you've ever gone on a mission trip, would you stand up? And if you're already standing, would you raise a hand? so that we could just look at you guys. Look at this, guys. This, this is beautiful. And it's, it's when I see this that I'm just like, we're, we're really not alone. We've all, we've all kind of done this before. You, you can go ahead and stand, like, sit back down. I don't want to make it awkward for you. But uh, something that we kind of really didn't convey is that it really just worked out perfectly because all of us, we had a topic that we wanted to talk about, whether it's just what was on our hearts or even what our personal Devo was about. And what I'm going to share with you is about my Devo. And my Devo was about endurance. I was the last Devo of the week. It was at 10.30 at night, and we were getting ready to leave for Galway at 1.30 in the morning. And let me tell you something. Five-hour difference. You put a bunch of American kids in Ireland at 10.30, everybody's loopy, okay? It's, it's pretty uh, significant. Um, but my, my main point was endurance, and here's my point with endurance. If you don't have it, you're not going to last. If you don't have endurance, you are going to burn out. And what I have noticed with mission trips is that we put on a mentality, and it's a beautiful mentality. We put on the mentality of selflessness. It's not about us this week. It's about other people. We put on the mentality of showing God. We're just going to shine God and that people are going to ask questions about us because we're driven by something else. That's the mentality. But my question to you is how many times do we put on a mentality for a mission trip that's needed in our own backyard? And how many times do we come back home and we take off the mentality? So for all of you that actually went on a mission trip this year and you're still on that high, my request to you is have endurance. Don't take off that mentality. If there's anything I have learned with the mission trip, it's that I need to change my mentality when I'm home. I'm not making the effort that I did in Ireland. I made a difference in one week. What can I do with a lifetime here? That, that is my thought for you. That is what I did with our Devo. My request to you is if you've been on a mission trip, dig deep. Think of that mentality. Apply it. If you haven't been on a mission trip, I know 
that you have an inkling of what it's like to be selfless, of how to shine for God. And my request to you is to find it. My request to you is to put on the mentality and keep it on. And that's all I have for you. Thank you. And as Team Mexico begins to make their way to the stage, I was really encouraged by Team Ireland's report. Um, they make me think of what was prayed over my own life when I went on my first mission trip. And that person said to me, I pray that you will forever be ruined, forever be ruined for the ordinary, that everything about your life after this point would be different. And it sounds like some people from Team Ireland, their lives are going to be different. And so we hope that that continues. And let's hear from Team Mexico. Whoop, whoop. So we had the opportunity to serve in um, Texcoco, which is just outside of Mexico City with Southern Mexico Missions, um, John and Dave's, David's parents. And it was overall a really great trip and a really great experience because we got to serve in many different ways. We had a work project, we had concerts, we did stuff at church and camp and it was, it was really amazing to me. One of the most impactful things was getting to talk to the people and seeing that the impact, us being there and us doing those things, was able to make on their lives. And I wanted to share a verse, and it's, it's a verse that I, I really like, and it's one that, that their parents um, shared with us and stressed the importance of uh, with us when we were there in Mexico. So 1 Corinthians 3.67 says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God was causing the growth. So then neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but God who causes the growth. And they have been doing mission work there for a while now. And some of these people, <laughs> they talked about, you know, they had, you know, planted that seed or, or you know, just talked to them and built relationships with them. But the uh, impact that we were able to make there, they said that they were able to start seeing growth, start talking to these people, and, and that they were more interested in hearing about God and seeing how God can change their lives. One of my favorite, some of my favorite interactions were talking with the kids at camp, and I don't know much Spanish, and they didn't know much English, but we would have a simple conversation, do you like the food here? Yes. What food do you like here? I really like tacos. What kind? And so it's just it was just amazing to see how God was able to to use us, use our gifts, and even uh, little things to um, do work for His kingdom. So we're gonna keep sharing our favorite parts about the trip, and hopefully you guys are able to get a small snapshot of what we were able to do. Okay. So one of my favorite parts, besides tanning, was. Definitely the work project. Um, we did a lot. So painting a fence and then sanding and staining, varnishing, you name it. We, we had to get this wood ready to get on a wall, that wall. Um, and they told us several times that just um, us being young people going to spread the word about God is super encouraging to the people there in Mexico. And so now um, anyone who kind of walks into the church building can see this and it can serve as a reminder is um, from our faith and our work, and it will just be uh, really impactful for them. So for me, my favorite part of the trip was, well, I would say was the weekend-long camp we did. Um, there was, well, this was from, for middle schoolers and high schoolers. And yes, yeah, Spider-Man made an appearance. <laughs> also known as Spooderman. <laughs> but anyways... Um, just, just the fact that we, we said it was like for high schoolers and middle schoolers, there was some girls that, 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 that play for my mom's team. And so they play football with, with her and some of them are older than high school, but we, we left it open to like everyone, everyone who wanted to go as, as long as you weren't married, you could go to this camp. And so first one of the girls was was thinking whenever she saw the post, she was like, well, it's probably just an event for Christians, and so I guess I won't be able to go. But then um, 
she contacted one of, uh, I, I think it was my parents, and she asked her, she asked them if, if she could go. And they're like, yeah, you're definitely welcome to come. And so she, w she was able to go, and it impacted me a lot how the first night uh, my dad asks who wants to pray for dinner, and she raises her hand. She does not, she's like, I don't know how to pray, but I want to pray. So she started giving, like, her highs and lows of the day. Like, I'm very happy to be here. The, v the vibe here is very, very good. I feel at peace. I feel happy. And thank you for the food. And so that was pretty much her prayer. But it impacted me a lot of how, like, someone can be looking for God in that way. Someone can desire to want to be with God, have a relationship with him. Even though they don't know how, they're trying their best. And we were able to just minister to her throughout the week and just talk to her. And she's, she's been attending church recently. And so that's, that's something that really stuck, stuck out to me. So one of the things that we were told before the trip and during the trip was to not have the mindset of, I'm going to go on this trip to make change. You need to have the mindset of, I'm going to go on this trip to serve and love people. So with the concert, it was really cool to see. We all had the mindset of, we're just going to share our talents and share our love for God. And so the first concert, we had a big crowd of uh, people reserved tables. And with that, uh, the missionaries, uh, Adrian and Lula, they got to um, talk to them. And them just seeing us worshiping God and seeing that we are younger than them really made a difference in how they view it. They were like, those people, I can see that they're happy. I want to be like them. So that would have to be one of my favorite parts is just to see how much of an impact that we made, even though that our mindset was not to, to make change on the trip, was to just to be um, uh, fellows of Christ and just to be an example. While I loved doing the camp and the concerts and the work project, my favorite part was when we visited a school in Texcoco. Um, while we were there, we interacted with kids as young as three all the way up until about fifth grade. Um, while we were there, we taught them songs in English and Spanish. We taught them Tonto in English, which is so much harder than in Spanish. Just <laughs> it, uh, so much, so much, so much, so just over and over again. Um, but just seeing my team interact with the kids and the teachers there was really impactful to, for me. And then seeing some of those kids then come to camp was really impactful. So earlier when we first started, I got to preach three times. I preached in Texcoco, I preached in Puebla, and I got to preach at the kids' camp. Um, the lessons I learned from preaching at Texcoco and Puebla was the value of community. We talked about this idea of where do we get our strength? Why it is our motivation for serving people? And what I really learned from it is we get our strength from Jesus. We don't have it all figured out. We don't know everything, and that's okay. We get our strength from Jesus when we're serving people. That's the idea of Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Um, my favorite sermon that I preached was David and Goliath at the kids' camp. Um, this story is something I remember always. What's cool is we're just talking about David and Goliath. And when I said David fell down, John Goliath fell down. Goliath fell down. <laughs> I promise I know my Bible stories. Uh, so. Don't worry. I made up for it in the translation. When he said David, I said Goliath. So we're good. <laughs> so when we talked about Goliath falling face forward, John just literally does that. And then he gets back up. And just seeing the look on the kids' faces and them having a good time, that was what made it worth it, right? And, and it was pretty funny, and that was a bonus. But the main thing I learned is the reason we do what we do is for community. Something I really loved about Lula and Adrian is how they did this, right? Um, nearly every night, we sat around a table. We sat with people we didn't know. We sat with people we did know. And we just enjoyed a meal together. That's something I really loved about it. 
All right, that fall really shook my ideas here, but <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, overall, uh, my experience, it was, it was a very good experience. Uh, some of you might, well, it's easy for me, well, the first couple of times we led mission trips, uh, especially the first one that we led two years ago, uh, I kind of was like, I, I knew that I was going to get something from it, but I didn't know quite what it was because I had grown up in the context of receiving missionary or mission trip groups, and growing up in a missionary family was just normal, and so I didn't really know what to expect. And year year by year, I keep learning a lot of really deep lessons. Uh, this year, one of the lessons that I learned was uh, just giving up what I wanted to do or giving up my own agenda. Uh, whenever my dad is uh, talking in the meetings with all the people that are interested in the team or that are part of the team, he mentions, he, he gives out a specific term that if you know, you know, it's flexico. And so flexico is basically just a combination of flexible and Mexico. Uh, and the idea is that, the, the idea of flexico is that you have a mentality where you're not going to be set on a schedule. The schedule is really just a suggestion. Now, and, and it's not only exclusively because it's Latin American culture and sometimes we can tend to drag deadlines and stuff, but sometimes it can just be that way in ministry as well. I actually, yesterday I was talking with Theobald and Theobald actually brought up the term again. He said, yeah, flexico, man. And I, I think that this term flexico can also just translate into a whole, a whole lot of other things in areas in our life, especially in ministry, because in ministry, we, we don't really know what's coming next. And since we don't know what's coming next, we can't actually set plans strictly on what we're going to do. Uh, throughout the, the week of camp that we had, or the weekend of camp that we had, uh, we had a theme that was God's story, or how do I fit in God's story. And so Caleb preached about David and Goliath and stepping into God's story. David uh, translated, he, David preached a sermon that was written by Elijah, uh, and I, I do want to give credit as well to Elijah that's over here, also wearing his Mexico merch. Uh, despite him not being there physically on the trip, uh, and it was very impactful for me to see just how his work or what he had helped prepare was still being, it, it still caused a huge impact on people. And so the sermon that Elijah had prepared for preaching, David was able to translate it and he gave the sermon, and this was still a really, really good message. He preached about Ehud and Eglon. And Ed, the, the, Eglon and Ehud. There we go. Um, and then I ended up uh, preaching on Sunday at the end of the camp about Jonah. And so all of this was talking about how we are part of God's story and how we are fitting in God's story. And so uh, one of the things, just as David mentioned, the, the girl that had gone to the camp without uh, knowing how to pray... I, I, she was one of the people that impacted me as well the most because, and it made me think how selfish sometimes we can be as Christians because it, it, sometimes we might not realize it, but there's people out there that just like this lady, this girl called Joy, just as Joy was seeking God and maybe she didn't know where to reach out to or maybe she didn't want to fully commit to being baptized quite yet, but she's curious. And there's, there's probably a lot of people around in your lives, maybe back at home, or people that you know that are maybe drifting away from God, and they, they might kind of be, they're kind of giving signals, or they're kind of trying to, to look for help, but, but they don't verbally seek for it. And sometimes we think if they don't seek for it verbally, sometimes it's just, oh, well, they're probably not needing help anymore. Or they're good. Uh, but I think it's a call for all of us to, to continue to live intentionally with the people that we're around, be intentional about loving them, and about showing who Christ really is. We don't, have to, we don't have to necessarily all go out and be preachers and all necessarily go out and be worship ministers all the time. It's good to be able to share that with people. And if God has given you those gifts, I would encourage you to develop, to develop them, especially being here. It's a good place to be able to learn and to grow and develop those areas. But God has gifted us all in different areas. Some people are a lot better at listening. I sometimes struggle with listening because I like to talk a lot. And <laughs> listening is not always my strong suit. But there's people that I know that I can go and talk to that will listen and I feel so comforted and I feel loved and cared for. And sometimes there's people that are very wise that can give really good advice. And so gifts from God don't always have to be 
musical talent or the ability to speak in front of people. Sometimes our, our gifts from God show up in a one-on-one -on -one conversation or just throughout our lives and our discipline, our consistency that we have with Christ. All of those things are useful for God. And those, those are things that God can use for us to be able to reach out to others. And so I would encourage you to reflect on that and to think maybe what area do you think that God has maybe gifted you in? Maybe it's a leadership position. Maybe you're able to speak to people. Maybe you're able to play music. Maybe you're just able to listen. And that is perfectly fine. And that is very much helpful because we all need all different kinds of people. And so I noticed a lot of growth in our team. And I am very proud. And I'm very, I'm very, I'm, I'm honored to be able to be part of this team as well with all of these guys. And uh, with, it, it's just, it's wonderful to be able to see the work that God is able to do through imperfect people. His perfect work shines through imperfect people, and it is, it's wonderful. I, I really liked it, and I would encourage you guys to, as Isaac had said, I would encourage you guys to, to think about going on a mission trip and doing something a little bit out of what you usually do. Maybe it might not be the biggest drastic change of your life, but maybe that small little bit that it changes in you will make the difference for you eventually. Thank you. Thank you, Team Mexico. So as the band gets themselves sorted and gets ready to, to sing the last couple of songs, um, I first wanna, I wanna comment on what Team Mexico taught you about ministry slash cross-cultural, cross-language ministry, even if you didn't know that he was teaching you this. The importance, one, of being flexible, knowing things change, and two, having a translator who understands your intent, not the words you actually said really, really helpful. Um, my last thing that I get to do and privilege that I get to share with you is that this afternoon, the trip leader applications will go live for Outreach 2025. If you are considering maybe God might be asking you to try something a little bit different and you're going to be a student enrolled here as of next spring, I would encourage you to consider applying. If you have a place that you want to serve, if you have a ministry you want to come alongside, um, our mission trips are student-led and student-initiated. We don't pick places and send people, but rather you pick places and you choose to go. And so we're going to leave the applications open until April 15th, after which we'll do interviews and hopefully have at least one training meeting before the end of the semester, giving you the summer to do planning, and then we can start recruiting in the fall. So I would encourage you to think about it, pray about it, consider is there some ministry you've heard of, maybe you were exposed to one at ICOM last year that you think you'd be really cool to take some people to go do something different and be ruined for the ordinary. All right, if you guys could stand and worship with us. This next song is called More Like Jesus, and I just want to take a minute to share how this song speaks for missions and why we do what we do when we go on mission trips and even when we just go about our daily lives here at school, when we go back home, wherever the Lord takes us. Because it's so important to remember that we not only share the gospel through our words, but through our actions through our behavior, through the way that we treat people, and our character. By displaying the love of Christ through humility, through service, through sacrifice and genuine love for one another. To love not just in word, but in deed. Not seeking credit or anything in return, just as Christ was. And Jesus said, by this they will know that you are my disciples. We can't do it without him. We can't do it on our own strength or on our own will. If we are going to be his disciples and make disciples, we need more of his love, his word, and his spirit. Less of our own will, less of our fears and our doubts, less of our selfishness and pride. God does really, really big things for the kingdom when we live lives that shine more of him and less of us. And that's definitely a lesson that we learned on our mission trips. So as we sing this next song, I hope it encourages you to adopt the attitude of Paul in John 3.30.
He must increase, I must decrease. Give the worship team a hand. Thank you guys for leading us in worship. I really appreciate it. And all of our mission trips, thank you guys so much. Uh, yeah, let's give them a hand. That, just thank you so much. That, um, one of the things that I was really aware of as you guys were talking is, is, first and foremost, you guys were representing Christ in a place that many of you hadn't been before. And I thank you so much for representing Christ and doing your kingdom 
work while you were there. But you were also representing us. And I'm proud to be a part of a committee that you were representing in a different place as you as you were the hands and feet of Jesus. So thank you so much for doing that. And I, I want to encourage you, if, if you feel like God might be calling you, say yes. The experiences you gain will ruin you. Don't be afraid of that. And uh, the other thing I want to encourage you is um, Isaac said something that, that really stuck out to me was that uh, mission is not just out there. It's in here. It's in your dorm rooms. It's in the library. It's in the student center. It's in the church that you go to. It's in the community you shop in. And um, widen your mission to include wherever Christ might have you represent him. So thank you guys, and thank you guys so much for uh, the opportunity we've got to do that. Let me pray with you all, and then we'll be dismissed. Father God, thanks so much. Thank you, Father, for calling us. Thank you, Father, for choosing to change the world. You could have chosen to do it in any way, but you chose to do it through people. Thank you, Father, that we are your people, and help us be world changers, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. All right, before we head out, we have one more song for you guys. And this song is called, I Thank God. And so we started talking about how much we have to be grateful for. And now, again, we close with gratefulness because that's what we should demonstrate with our lives. And the way we do that is through obedience. Wandering into the night Wanting a place to hide This weary soul His bad bones I try with all my mind But I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting A vagabond Just when I ran out of road, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me that I was not alone. Pick me up and turn me around and place my feet on solid ground. I think the master, I think the savior, because you heal my heart. You changed my name forever free I'm not the same I think the master I think the savior I thank God whoa, whoa. I cannot deny what I've seen Got no choice but to believe My doubts are burning like ashes in the wind So so long to my old friends Burden and bitterness You can't just keep it moving Nah, you ain't welcome here From now till I walk streets of gold I'll sing of how you save my soul this wayward son has found his way back home. You pick me up, you turn me around, you place my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because you healed my heart, you changed my name, forever free. I'm not the same, I thank the Master. I think the Savior, I thank God. Whoa, whoa. I lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. Oh, I am free. Hell
lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Yeah, I lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. I lost another one. I am free. I am free. I thank the Savior because you healed my heart. You changed my name forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the Master. I thank the Savior. I thank God. Whoa, whoa. All right, you guys are dismissed. Thank you very much. God bless you.